Play, please. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, would you please please the prayer? Sure. Everyone would please bow their heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this time of the year, for the reminders you give us as to why we are here and what we should be thankful for. Dear Lord, I pray that you watch over us this evening as we go about the business of this city, that it could be pleasing for you. And Lord, I pray that you watch over all of us as we spend time with friends and family throughout the Christmas holiday season. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Doug. All right, uh, reading and approval of the minutes from December 5th. It looks like you two are going to be busy making motions. And, and a little shorthanded tonight. Motion to approve and suspend reading. A motion by half. And I'll second that. Second by pillar. Discussion. All in favor of the minute, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right, approval of the agenda. Any changes? Monty, anything okay. different? Okay. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. Okay, motion by Pillar. Second. Second by Hack. Discussion. All in favor of approving this agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <clears throat> 5A, engineer's report. As you can see, um, we did get a little update from Grant and there's nothing, no actions, any, nothing needs approval. Um, Mike, did you hear anything else today from him? Okay, I'm available by phone if you have any questions for anything that you know is not Okay. Dave, you have anything? All right. Um, if we don't have any questions, we won't contact them. We'll just move on. The engineer's report will be brief. Moving down, down to 8A, <clears throat> approval of the liquor license applications. I have received those as noted in the notes. The applications have been returned along with the fees. So if you want to approve them individually or if you just want to do a blanket motion as well. The list is back. the same as last year? Yes. And everybody has one, one less. B's Cafe did not oh, renew okay. their license. Gotcha. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve <coughs> the, the entire lot. Okay. Okay, motion by Pillar? Second. Second by Hack. Discussion. I'm, I'm pretty sure we went over this last year too, Monty, but is the golf course no. the, in the county? <coughs> in the county. Okay. All right. That was the only one that I had a question on. Monty, well, did Chris just not have a good turnout with that? Or? Yeah, he just said it wasn't worth it for the few times that he did offer alcoholic beverages. So. <clears throat> We're not open for supper, so most people can't drink at lunchtime if they're working. Right. Right. Yeah. Legally. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Any more discussion? Roll call. Pillar. Aye. Hack. Aye. Over and over. Aye. Motion carried. Reports. Dan? Okay. I, as everyone knows, we've gone live now <coughs> with the new water storage facility. We had <coughs> a few wrinkles with regard to some water leaks underground. I know that in the course of, of going after some of those leaks, we dug, we moved, we dug. A little bit like that. Um, having some conversations with Dave and, and our water guys, we talked about resources available to assist in helping find some of these different water leaks and stuff below the surface. And we have relied on outside resources to come in that have the, the <coughs> equipment that does that, uh, which creates that sometimes you know a time delay and availability of that equipment to come in and help us locate those leaks. 
So in the course of our conversation, uh, they, the particular piece of equipment that they've been working with, with the outside folks, uh, they were able to get a quote for that. Uh, and Monty and I had some conversations on availability of funds before the end of the year here. Uh, what I've got is what's referred to as an LD15. It's a water leak detector. And it's, it, it, make it very, very simple. It's kind of like a, a metal detector from the standpoint that you put on your, your ear, ear muffs and then it creates <coughs> noise. And there's different frequency settings that you can put on these devices for the different types of leaks that, or the different types of conditions that you're looking at. So you can literally set this up so that you're going through asphalt and through, through the ground, through the dirt, so that you can pinpoint these, these anomalies on the piping and stuff underground. It also has settings to where you can literally go to your, your fire hydrants and some of your different locations like that and you can, you can attach a mechanism there and you can get readings to where you can hear if there's uh, some anomalies occurring and allow you to track that down. So the long and short of it is uh, the bid came back in at uh, just a smidge over $4,000, $4,100 for this device. It runs on C-cell batteries, so that's pretty straightforward and, and uh, about an 80-hour runtime on C-cell <coughs> batteries. So we don't have to worry about re you know, recycling batteries and different things like that with this thing. But we had, we had kind of a lengthy conversation and, and I told them in my years out at DGC we had different types of leak detection systems like this. And uh, sometimes it's the difference between spending an awful lot of money excavating in multiple locations uh, to where the upfront cost is, is paid for you know, almost instantly on that. So, with all of that babble, I would make a motion that we entertain <coughs> the purchase of one of these LD15 water leak detectors at the cost of $4,100 plus some sales tax probably incorporated into that. Here we have motion back. No tax? Okay, good. Second. Second by Hack. Discussion. Is, is there any that are run on uh, like plug-ins so we don't have to do buy the C batteries? Well, you, typically when you're looking for a water leak out in somebody's uh, yard or out in the middle of the street and stuff like that, you're not going to necessarily have access to recharge it. No, to, uh, to <coughs> plug it in. Is that what you're saying? No, like how your cell phone oh, is where you recharge your where cell you phone. Where you recharge it? Yeah, do they have those those kind of items? You know, they 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 may. They may have re rechargeable to where you would do that, but then, then what, what you end up finding out on some of those things is they have a particular life to them, and then when, when they're no longer good and you have to replace it, you almost have to replace the entire unit gotcha. versus the batteries. So that, that was kind of the thought behind looking at this particular model. Okay. Well, thank you. Yep. Good explanation. Thank you. Yeah, Harold. Yeah, those lead detectors. Uh, it wouldn't be used, something used every day, all day long. No. And the uh, cost of batteries would be minimal. Correct. Yep. Who I've else? Used some, I've used them in detectors in the past. Yeah. Who else has used these that we've seen? Dave, have you seen these in, in action? This is the Water Authority. Yeah, well, rural water. The board that gave that presentation, this would be the model just like what he's using. Perfect. He's let yeah. us actually play with it when he's been here uh, working on some of our water leaks or helping us find them. And it's a really simple machine to run. Yeah, the learning curve there. is minimal because they've already had some experience with it. I would have paid for a cell phone once that leak we had up at North Star 2. That, that's what came to my mind. As soon as these to guys me. talked to me about it, I was like, well, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. So. You know the discussion. All right, we have a motion in a second. Roll call. Keller. Aye. Hack. Aye. Obedor. <coughs> Carried. Thank you. And uh, as everybody knows, we, we had uh, a week of inaccessibility with regard to getting around and, and picking up trash and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that our citizens understand. Simply look out the window and, that, and that's all you really needed for an explanation. So um, 
the folks are doing a fantastic job now and getting caught up and everything like that. So kudos to them having to deal with the type of situation they were dealing with. And that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Jason. Well, Dan just kind of touched on what I was going to touch on. Uh, <clears throat> you know, through it all, we've just had what I would call minor breakdowns. I had a cylinder break on me, John Deere one way early, well, I don't know what morning it was. So that Friday morning, Saturday morning. Um, we got that up and running today. Um, the garbage drop did run today. Um, toggle switch on our skid loader for our snow blower. That went down, so the parts are available in Mandan. They went down to maybe hunt for some extra cylinders, spare cylinders, which we're gonna have to go down and get quotes or search quotes because it's brand specific. And then Dave also picked up the toggle switch that's back operational. Um, <clears throat> again, we had on average we get what 43 inches of snow in a snow in a snow season. Or no, 46, we've had 43, whatever. I mean, we've had a lot of snow in the last month. So uh, I always relate to it as, and I know I'm comparing a big city to a small city, but I'm thankful where I live and where I've driven. And um, I mean, I'll, I'm interested how Fargo's looking right now, because I'll bet you're, you're at a lane and a half on a four lane street on either side. So I, I as my madness in my head as a citizen goes, I ease it with those type of situations. Um, and I've had some good discussion with citizens in, in town. Not a lot. City Hall and Jerry probably feel a lot. And I, I welcome people to call me. I really do. So um, that's about all I got. Thank you. Dave, anything? <clears throat> well, everything's up and running and we're widening streets and be getting shortly getting on the wind road off of Main Street, hopefully get everything up and running again and stuff. So. And we did we did have a conversation at our last commission meeting about good Samaritans in our community helping each other out and uh, I had about a five and a half <coughs> foot drift all the way across Divide Street um, after my driveway and uh, had had a neighbor up the hill who's got one of those shiny little orange tractors with a front end bucket on it and he was uh, out enjoying himself and made a nice uh, through away there before the city had opportunity to come up with the snow blower and, and finish off and do a very, very fine job. So <coughs> again, kudos to, to those folks that are out there helping each other out. So appreciate that. Uh, Dave or Jason, any, anything on looking at the used equipment for Blade or I haven't had a chance yet or whatever when I was in Bismarck today I was going to drive through Butler's lot and look at that one but they haven't moved any snow in their lot yet it was about that deep in their used equipment lot and if their salesman and parts department and stuff was as busy as when I was at Bobcat I didn't go in and bother them we didn't ever got out there to look at it but yeah. hopefully in the real near future yeah well for the rest of your information um, Dave and Mike Frelick and Jason and I have been kind of we've had quite a group chat going on between the four of us in the last week and uh, Mike Freilich actually found a used snow gate in Washburn uh, and Blade and uh, I think that's something we really need to be looking at. I think it's going to be a long winter and we're, I don't think the snow is going to stop after this uh, event but you remember we initially looked at new was upwards of 40 plus thousand <clears throat> and used, certified used was around 25,000. Um, the, the one that Mike found um, with controls, and we need to have to do a little bit of uh, extra work to it to <coughs> retrofit to our existing equipment is, would be less than 10,000 is what, he, what he's found. Um, and I just directed Dave and Jason and Mike to please start scouring, let's start finding something um, We've had a lot of snow and a lot of uh, people. I'm sure the Mathesons are here to discuss the snow. Um, yeah, I think it can help our process. So I, when, we, when we decided to push snow to the sides early in the season, 
No one expected uh, an 18 inch or a 17 inch uh, event to happen before Christmas. Um, and we, we also know that those plows don't work great um, when it comes to over 12 inches at a shot. But we were out before 12 inches came too. So I think there's, I think for the, I think we need to possibly invest and find something that's going to work. But anyhow, just a quick little update on, on that for me. Uh, on <coughs> I know and my, my immediate response to that was uh, it, it might not be worth the money, but uh, certainly after this last adventure here, what does happen, and, it, and it's fact, is when the snow gets moved with a blade or whatever, it takes that light fluffy snow and when it's moved it becomes a little bit more compact and if you don't hit it immediately with your shovel or snow blower or whatever it's hard. it's uh, it hardens and it, and it becomes a challenge to any residential piece of equipment and yeah. so well i know on my street and I, I don't ever ask for special attention on my street actually i tell my neighbors i'm i'm last so don't think you're going to get off um, good but we still haven't pushed ours to the curbs on my street and I was hesitant to even finish moving my snow because I know it's going to get pushed right back in front of my driveway but it's I can give an update today Jerry yeah. Mike did let me know kind of in the heart of town from Napa to well I can read it on my phone if you don't mind sure basically the internal part of town was just one machine got curb to curb let me just read this Everything from Napa to the police department from 7th to Main Street are pushed curb to curb. Everything south of Maine is pushed to the curb. So basically through the heart of Old Town Hazen. So yes, we, have, we haven't got over. I know I drove around Saturday evening or Saturday late afternoon and Sunday. Um, <clears throat> I talked with Jerry. A few spots here you know, we got. People still dumping it out in the street, but mm -hmm. and I told Mike and I told Dave, we gotta appreciate the people trying to help. You know, we've got some streets that are piled here, piled there. <clears throat> We're passable. Even though you're not totally clean, it's passable. So um, again, I'll iterate. I I don't really, you know, to me, I'm still young. I'm 49, but I noticed straight away with going from the middle with the windrow and having it sit and then we clean the whole town windrow it and then clean it up um, i'm glad we didn't do it for this last the last four days because there would have been spots that would have been worse than your five foot drift across divide um, and i'm not saying the whole all of town would have been that way but i appreciate not having that lumpy bumpy street in the center uh, Monty just informed me, you know, I never thought our UPS guy that's now scrambling to get presents out or packages before Christmas really appreciates not having to drive on icy, slopey streets with his UPS truck again. Thinking outside our box, in my mind, those, si those situations, I know it's not the greatest, Either way we go, it's not the greatest, but I just keep trying to keep my mind with pleasant th thoughts of what what are the was it what are the positives? We we all we don't care for snow like Jerry said. We weren't expecting this much snow in a short amount of time. So, and Dave, uh, kudos to your guys that have worked a lot of hours for going out early early mornings and late at night and. I have a little positive comment. I passed that on to the guys or yep. whatever too. Yep. Add a few negative ones, but oh, yeah. I think the positive ones are way outweigh some of the negative yeah. ones. <clears throat> I'll send you some of my negative ones. <laughs> 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 no, I agree. It's, it's it's the nature of the beast. It's not it's not great for everybody. We know that. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but we are, you know, we're we're short, and um, it's saves time and money, and diesel, and it's just not perfect. But um, we will, I'll, we have public comment in a few minutes. I'll let you guys talk in a moment, if that's okay with you guys. Okay. Um, Monty, anything you know of, uh, for finance and busing or police and fire? Nothing. Okay, all right. Uh, Buster, HCD. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the Renaissance don't need more. <clears throat> 
uh, that got postponed from last week. And we're look, going to look at expanding our zone. I think I've mentioned before, we can expand our zone to 34 blocks. And preliminarily what we're looking at is, right now it's 24, <coughs> but preliminarily what we're looking at is going up, is it seven, the Senex? Fourth down. Fourth, excuse me. Yeah. Fourth Avenue, fourth to Seventh Street, and then also cutting across and taking it. It would, it would take us to Sennex um, and Barrowbass and that area, and then uh, so we would have the option also to to we probably would be still be within the the zone to actually designate blocks on both sides of the street, which we probably will do, but certainly. I think we do want to put the west side in, possibly, uh, where the apartment units are over there and whatever. And then, of course, the other ones would be the the, uh, the east side. So we'll we'll have more discussion about it tomorrow <coughs> in terms of where we're going. Of course, I'll be back if we de what we decide to do with that. The other thing that I would just uh, want to remind everybody of is we do have the. County Coalition meeting scheduled for Thursday at 6 o'clock over at the Civic Center and the main topic on the agenda. No. At Bula, what did I say? No. Uh, you just said Civic Center. But oh, yeah. okay, at Bula, yeah. Uh, <coughs> but uh, we're going to have our District 33 legislators uh, present to uh, uh, give us some insights into in terms of where they're at and yeah, how that they all have their uh, committee assignments and so on. That's all I have. Thanks, Buster. Buster, just uh, so so you're aware, Monty and I have been having conversations with more engineering to update the city portion, oh, the city portion. of the comprehensive plan. Okay. Good. And uh, Jared and folks from Moore have forwarded back to us their documentation on that, and we've put together a pretty extensive list of, of capital projects for the future. <coughs> And they've asked us to take a look at that list and prioritize it, and uh, and then give them opportunity to kind of finalize that and then get that back to the folks. Water. So it's moving forward. Good. Good. Glad to hear. Thank you. Uh, one last thing I have to mention is I, I noticed that we had a preliminary drawing for the fire department building and. I know Chief Beery isn't here, and neither is Mr. Weijer to talk about this. But didn't I? <coughs> didn't they say that they were going to do drive-through doors? That they were going to do doors on the east and we west had side. Talked about that. It's not on the drawing. So yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure if that's an option that they're looking at, depending on money, or. But if you do talk to them, that'd be great to find it out and. And I know the con. When I mentioned is concrete included in that price, they said yes. But obviously that might be just the building. Does that include from the doors all the way east? It looks like it's going to be about probably 50 feet more concrete for the apron coming from the doors I'm out to the road. Doing that apron okay. So I'll, I'll find out. Okay. So I assume that's not going to be as dirt. I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. So when when they do come, Monty, it'd be great if we had that, and then okay. plumbing and electrical as well. Let's make sure we have a. Hopefully we have a, a better picture of what they're looking at. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, now we're moving down to 13, public comment. Nancy, you were here first. Did you have something to comment about? Well, actually, it might be bad. It's been pretty hard on all of us, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> so I really am glad to hear some of your positive uh, comments about maybe changing, blocking the driveways and stuff like that with maybe getting a, a gate, I would welcome that because I agree with you, Dan. It is very difficult to get through that even if you're right on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And our equipment, the little guy stuff isn't built for this. I know it's hard on the city stuff, which is kind of built for it. So, um, and I do want to thank the crews for being out there. Um, you know, it's been tough. I know that they've worked long and hard hours. Have been doing a great job. I'm just hoping we can change blocking people's driveways and fire hydrants. And they do a pretty good job around some of them. But last year they did a wonderful job. We didn't have as much snow. But um, and like you say, maybe it was a good idea to 
to push it off to the sides, but I would really love to uh, physically not have to try to move that chunky monkey stuff, and I can't afford to hire somebody, like most of the residents, to have somebody and, and have that luxury. And I was hoping that a lot of neighbors would unite, but what I've seen is almost a division, where if they like you, they will help you, and if they don't, then they won't. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really sad. I was really hoping that we would bond together as a community and help each other. Not that a lot of people haven't, but um, I was surprised by some of the actions that I've seen by individuals. And, uh, so I'm hoping that, okay. that, that maybe with this Christmas spirit, we'll all have a sense <clears throat> of love and joy put back into us to help each other out again. And maybe we'll find a solution to ease everyone with the street crew and everything. So thank you very much for thinking ahead and looking at the snow gate. I appreciate well, it's that. It's not a guarantee, but it's something we, we need to explore. I think it would be, yeah. I, I'm all for it. Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of people are, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, I don't mind, you yeah. know, paying a little bit more on my tax dollars, but... Okay, Mark, you got that written down? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, hey, cool. you know, you guys did do a great job of removing it last year, and I'm kind of paying a little bit more and not having it done, yeah. so it's... Okay, appreciate your comments, Nancy. Okay. so thank you. Yep, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Matheson. Well, I'd like to complain about the snow removal, the system that they're using. Uh, yes, we did have 17 inches in November and 18 or 19 in December and push it to the side, we've got to fight it all winter. Push it to the center and haul it out. And if it had started in November, we wouldn't have had that 17 inches to fight now. And last spring pushed it to the side, uh, my girlfriend April took care of it for us. But uh, <laughs> now, get rid of it as fast as you can. There's a safety hazard and big piles of snow at the corners. You you got to drive out in the middle of the street to see the turn. That's a safety hazard. And like I said, myself, I'm not healthy enough to really go out and help all my neighbors anymore. Can't do it. <coughs> and uh, I struggle to get my own out. And I think we should be pushed to center and hauled out. Yes, it's going to be long hours. Years ago, I worked long hours too, so that's back to life. Expense is going to be up, but expense pushed to the side is going to be up too. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. All it out. And my biggest, biggest concern is in the driveway. Uh, we did have a neighbor that came over and blew us out, and in the afternoon we were plugged in again. And we just can't, we can't handle it. It'd be nice if somebody could through the city or if we had a list of names that we could have somebody come in and open it up. Um, it just isn't doable for us. So physically I can't handle it that much anymore. No, no I, and I we <coughs> And we do that. have a yard that a lot of snow could be blown in. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, is our empty lot behind where you know you're coming down the street it doesn't it? Wouldn't hurt my feelings if some of it got uh, you know, blowing up there, but the biggest thing is removing that bridge. It just we know it's not convenient for everybody. And then, yeah, I've got a couple neighbors that couldn't do <laughs> either. Luckily, myself and a few other neighbors have some time and energy. Yeah. So in the past, yeah. I cleaned up many a driveway for mm -hmm. neighbors, but I can't do it anymore. Yeah, no. You don't you expect to one of these things don't work yeah. good. Yeah, I know. Maybe uh, that's something, you know, that some folks take it upon themselves. They look around and they know their neighbors and they, they help and stuff like that. You know, maybe that's something that uh, if, if folks have the wherewithal and are willing to, to help folks that aren't able to do it on their own, maybe they can contact City Hall and just let, let us know that they're available. And then, you know, we could put something out there that if, if you're in need of this particular service or whatever, contact City Hall and maybe we can offer up, I don't know if we can list. legally do that or not, but yeah, I don't know either. If it's well, our, our neighbor has been very generous with doing this, but came Saturday, he had to go to work. Sure, sure. And so then he's coming home quite late in the day. Yeah. You work at 12 hours if you don't want to go help your neighbor for another 12 hours. Yeah. And this could last three, four more months. You know, so it's going to be a long, be a long winter. Yeah. Yeah. And like Jason said, any any solution that we look at isn't going to be perfect for, for every situation out there. And 
you know, I, I had that drift this year, the last four years, I never had to run my snowblower. So well, I, my you know, snowblower sat in the garage too for about three years. <laughs> you know, it's it, it, it's just one of those things. I think we got caught here, and you know, I, I don't think there's a perfect answer. So, right, but thank you for the feedback. Yeah. But a gate or something. Yeah. Somebody to help us out in that situation would really be appreciated. Years ago, after I retired, I had about a ten or eleven driveways that would blow it out. I ain't gonna do it no more. Yeah. yeah. Well, I went through 11 gallons of gas helping all my neighbors, and then I went and refilled and got the price tag, and I went, oh my, but, you know, it's, but it is hard on my poor little equipment and me, so I said, I, I got to take a break. Yeah. So if you guys can help us out, I know that you're willing to try new things, and I'm with you on that, so. Thank you for your input, we appreciate it. We will try to do better, we're still, yeah, we're trying to figure it out. Okay, moving down to 14, approval of bills. <coughs> Anything extra, Monty? Thank you. Okay. Just fill this left here. Yeah. switch from today that we got Monty or no? Yes. There's some other parts for uh, the pump belt from Bob Cat too. Okay. And the belt tensioner. Gotcha. <clears throat> Motion to approve. Motion by hack. I'll second it. Second by pillar discussion. Roll call. Jack. Aye. Pillar. Aye. Over an hour. Aye. Carried. <coughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you.